Hi everyone, this is the Introduction to Econometrics, Econ or AREC 335. So a brief overview of this course. Uh, economics suggests important relationships, often with policy implications, but virtually never suggest quantitative magnitudes of causal effects. What do we mean by that? If you've taken microeconomics, you probably have heard about elasticities. Um, for example, the elasticity of demand, elasticity, elasticity of supply. You don't actually estimate those values in those courses. In this course, we might estimate that value. Or we might talk about the effect of um, uh, education on wages or something like that. In this course, we're going to statistically identify that causal effect, the, the effect of education, an additional year of education on your wages. Here are some examples of economic questions we can test using econometrics. For example, what is the quantitative effect of reducing class size on student achievement? This is the one that we will be covering throughout most of this course because this is what the book uses as an example. So if we reduce class size by one student, how does that affect the achievement of the remaining students? How does another year of education uh, impact earnings? Can we forecast the future values or prices of the different commodities? For example, corn prices or oil prices. Can we, can we get an estimate of what the prices will be next month? Is there gender, gender or racial discrimination in wages or home loans? Do women get paid less than men on average or something similar? What is the price elasticity, elasticity of alcohol, gasoline, corn, uh, consumption or production, all types of price elasticities? You can think of many other questions that can be tested with econometrics. What's the difference between econometrics and statistics? Econometrics tends to focus on non-experimental data. Statistics uh, would hope to focus on experimental data, on the other hand. Econometricians are less bashful about arguing for a causal relationship from non-experimental data. Statisticians virtually never claim a causal relationship. The main goal of econometrics is identifying causal relationships. This course is about using data to measure causal effects. Ideally, we would like an experiment. Uh, this would be experimental data. We might randomly assign medicine or a vaccine to some people and a placebo to others and see how the vaccine or medicine uh, treats a particular disease versus a placebo treatment. But almost always we only have observational data, not experimental data, such as returns to education or we might look at cigarette prices. Um, and most of, most of this course deals with the difficulties arising from using observational data rather than experimental data to estimate causal effects, such as confounding effects, the omitted factors, or simultaneous, simultaneous causality. This is the um, old adage of correlation does not imply causation. So we'll be talking about that a lot in this course. In this course, you will learn methods for estimating causal effects using observational data, like regression analysis. Learn tools that can be used for other purposes, for example, forecasting commodity prices using time series data. Uh, we'll focus on applications, the theories used only as needed to understand the whys of the methods. We'll learn to evaluate regression analysis of others, and this means you will be able to read and understand empirical economics papers and other econ courses. And you'll get hands-on experience with regression analysis in your problem sets and individual final projects. My goals in this course are to teach you useful skills for job placement. You'll learn the uh, statistical software R. If you can use R, you can use Excel. You, can, you have the bare bones of statistical software, so you can transfer that to just about any statistical software. Um, you will learn statistical and data analysis. Um, a new field that's emerging is called data science, and this would also, uh, this course would also serve as sort of an introduction to data science. And I hope most of all to leave you with the impression that econometrics and statistics are useful and interesting. I don't expect you to love them, 
I don't expect everyone in this course to go away thinking they want to continue on in econometrics, but I do hope that everyone leaves with an, uh, an appreciation for the discipline. The statistical software we will use in this course is called R. I will give you details on how to implement uh, programs in R as we go along. All right, on to some of the details of uh, what we will be talking about. Here are some econometric data types. We have experimental versus observational data. Uh, we've already talked about that. Uh, observational data is we go and look at uh, the world and we collect data and see how people are, are behaving. Experimental, on the other hand, is we run an experiment of our own. We randomly assign a vaccine to people versus a placebo. We randomly assign some treatment to see how it affects people. Uh, more specifically, if we're looking at data types, we have, um, or how data can be organized, we might have cross-sectional data, which is a single time period uh, or many, many entities. So this might be um, all uh, unemployment rates um, across the United States for every state in a single year or uh, something similar to that but there's no we only have one observation per time period per unit per state per county per person time series on the other hand is, is sort of the opposite we have many time periods observations per unit but only one unit so we might have corn prices the corn would be the unit um, and then we would have uh, corn prices every day for say a year or two years. Uh, panel data is sort of the combination of the two. It's many entities and many time periods. It would be uh, many states, unemployment rates across many states uh, over many time periods. So a quick example and some motivation. The empirical problem we'll talk about a lot in this class because it's the one the book talks about is the effect of class sizes on educational output. The policy question is what is the effect on test scores or some other output measure of reducing class size or increasing class size by one student per class or by maybe eight students per class. And we must use data to find this out. The question for the policymakers might be should they invest in reducing class sizes? Should they spend some money to do so and how if they do uh, what, what would they expect in returns of uh, student achievement? The book's use, book uses uh, the California test score data set. Uh, it's all K through six and K through eight California school districts. There's a, a N equals 420, which means there's 420 school districts in the sample. The variables are fifth grade test scores uh, and student teacher ratio, STR. We will talk a lot about student teacher ratios, which is the number of students in the district divided by the number of full time equivalent teachers. So let's look at this question. Do, do districts with smaller classes have higher test scores? Uh, what, the, what you see below is a, a scatter plot of test scores versus student teacher ratios. What does this figure show? Uh, you should be looking at it and saying, I can't really tell if there's a relationship here. There's no obvious uh, downward sloping line or upward sloping line here. Uh, it's just kind of a, a mess of dots indicating that this is uh, a messy relationship. So the scatter plot isn't really helping us much. So this, the scatter plot didn't really help us, and we need some numer to get some numerical evidence on whether districts with lower student teacher ratios have higher test scores. But how can we do this? We'll cover all of this in more detail as we go through the course, but this is just kind of a, a motivation for uh, why we want to do the, the regression tools that we're doing in this course. First, we might compare the average test scores in districts with low student teacher ratios to those with high student teacher ratios. This would just be called estimation, maybe. We can test the null hypothesis that mean test scores in the two types of districts are the same against an alternative, alternative hypothesis that they differ. This would be considered hypothesis testing. This is the basis, basics of statistics. And we can even estimate a confidence interval around our our estimation um, but uh, what we care about in this course is thinking about what are the other possible causes of this 
of, of this relationship? What are the confounding factors? So regression allows us to control for those other confounding factors, such as income. For example, it could be that wealthier parents spend more time reading to kids and schools in wealthier neighborhoods tend to have smaller class sizes. So in fact, it's not that smaller classes lead to higher test scores. It's the fact that uh, smaller classes are associated with wealthier neighborhoods and wealthier neighborhoods are associated with parents that can spend more time with their children. And therefore it's actually the income of the parents that's causing this relationship, not the class sizes. So we can control for that potentiality in using regression. Okay, so the syllabus. The syllabus contains most of the information you will need. Please read the syllabus before emailing the TA or myself. What is on the syllabus, chapters, chapters uh, for each module, office hours for the TA and myself, we will do on lab and office hours, and the grading policy. What we will cover in this course. Uh, review of basic statistics and probability. The core material is linear regression models or ordinary least squares. We will learn to specify and estimate econometric, um, econometric models and interpret their results and uncover and correct common statistical problems. This training in this course will help you in your job search post-graduation. The readings for this course are Stock and Watson. Uh, it's a textbook called Introduction to Econometrics. You can use any version you like. Uh, the topics haven't changed over the years, so uh, please feel free to use whichever version is easily accessible. Here are the course prerequisites. These are also listed on the syllabus. A warning for the unwary. So essentially what this says is that you should treat this like a math course. If you do not keep up, you will fall behind. It's not easy to pick up later because each of the, the modules builds on the previous module. They're not independent of one another. Grading. So um, I have two methods for grading, method A and B. The first method is to, for those students that do well along the way. Homework exercises, 25%. You can read through this yourself. Um, weekly participation is for the online discussions. There'll be two midterm exams and a final. Method B is for people that uh, did not do well along the way. Maybe you didn't treat this like a math course. You didn't heed the, the warning for the, unwar uh, the unwary on the previous slide. Uh, and so you can drop your midterms and hopefully make up your grade on the final. Homeworks will be posted at least one week before the due date. You will have a homework approximately every two weeks. When writing out answers, be explicit. Don't just write your answer. Uh, you will not receive full credit. No late homeworks. Uh, and you have one week uh, after receiving a graded homework assignment or exam to provide me with a written grade appeal. The appeal should identify which question is believed to be incorrectly scored. And note that I can also uh, adjust the grade on any of the other uh, answers you gave on the homework. You can drop the lowest homework score, by the way. Disabilities, if you have a documented disability, please let me know as soon as possible. Uh, this course adheres to CSU's academic integrity policy, which can be found in the general catalog. If you have difficulties in this course, please ask for help as soon as possible. You have access to my office hours and the TA's office hours, um, and do not let yourself get behind. Again, the readings, uh, Stock and Watson, uh, skim chapters one and two, the intro and the data section, and chapter two is probability. Uh, we will be covering that in the first module.